All right, guys, continuing where I left off. So in the last tutorial, I showed how to procedural generate worlds using seeds. So here I'm just putting in a random seed. Where does, I don't know, I'll just make up something there. Or I could have hit this, but I don't want the R. Yeah, let's go ahead. Then say new game. So now, whenever we do something now, we can maybe hit the trees. I want to find a house. Oh, there it is over there. So if we come here, for example, hit this tree here. If I save, let's look over there. Save and quit. I know I have a continue button that shows up because there's a save. If I hit continue, it resumes and the tree is gone that was here. And uh, we could continue doing whatever we're doing. And save again. Continue. There you go. The rock that was here is gone. So I don't save vertical rotation, just the horizontal. All right. So let's go back here. I'll show you guys what I did. So let's go from the data. So we create this data script and we auto load it in the project settings so it's there and I have a save system as well uh, I won't make a tutorial on the save system because it's uh, I have a video on it you could see it in the description below so what I do with the data script though is I store the player stats maybe HP position rotation and items so the wood and the rocks whatever I break I get them so I need to update the UI for that and then we have a array of trees and an array of rocks whatever we remove gets added to here as a ID and then in the rocks now we have an ID so each time I instance a rock I give it an ID same with the trees and then right here whenever I remove a, a tree I store the the value the uh, inventory item would increase it by one then do the remove trees append by that index then remove the tree and the rock and tree has a pretty much the same stuff but store in rock instead so in the save system now all we do is we create a save file remember I have a, there's a tutorial I'll link it down below then we create a Encryption open with the encryption because you know if you want to protect it, so it's just one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. Then you store each variable. Uh, so we store a seed that's a seed that we use to continue the game, and we store the player stats, items, remove trees, and uh, remove rocks. And then we close the file and emit the signal that we save. I don't really use this right now. But it's there and I could print the data so we know what we just save. Then on load, we load the same data again and do it in the same order that you saved because you can't really tell it what you want to load, it just knows that it's supposed to load the next thing in the list. So load it, load that, load that, load that. So it's all loading the same stuff over. Then I have a uh, boolean that tells me that the data is loaded. So in the menu function now, you say randomize. This is for the just the start screen, the the random numbers. So I check if data is loaded. If it is, we put the data, the seed that was in the save file, we put it back in the text edit field. If there's not, we do a random seed. And then I have a show continue that shows the continue button right here. So visibility, save, load it, right? And then in the generator now, let's show you how we check for the rock and the player as well. So let's see, generate trees. So right where are we gonna generate trees, we check the data, the remove trees, we do a loop, check if there's an index that matches this current index in that data. And if it does, we move it up to here. 
and then we check in this loop in the first loop if this tree index is equal to i so if it is we continue that means we skip over it so this goes to the next loop instantly the reason i do it here is and not right here is because the continue only cuts the last loop so i have to bring it up and then remove this here then you do go ahead instance instance same thing for the rocks Check remove rocks index with another loop. Then do that. This was me testing out something. I had problems with it earlier. And then I had problems with that earlier. So save. Uh, for the player, let's go back up a bit. Place player. So we check if the player stat is not equal to vector tree. I mean it's not zero then if it isn't we get both the position the saved position and the saved rotation and I'm using a camera I'm rotating the camera and not the player uh, shape so I rotate the camera's degrees rotation degrees I'm way to you know to that and I have a vertical as well if not if there's none of this then we play in the we put the player at the random position that's set up here and that's about it all right and that's pretty much it remember the uh, the link is in the description for the the files on github you could download it for yourself all right guys take care um for the next video i'm going to change the uh terrain generation to use uh noise uh, simplex nice. So I'm gonna make that a next video. Alright. Take care guys.